Why Ravens receivers Hollywood Brown and Rashad Bateman being out is okay for now. By his play calling in that first preseason game, did Giro already let us know who he felt was going to be the number two quarterback? How much of a shot does Chris Westry have at making this Ravens roster? These and much more on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon uh, if you want to become a team keep it clean patreon you can go to patreon.com slash engraven vids and i mean speaking of the team keep it clean patrons shout out to all of them uh, i appreciate y'all for showing a little bit of extra love to the channel because uh, it's something that is not a necessity but y'all chose to do it so we appreciate it that much more uh, so team keep it clean as always we got great questions so Let's do it. So the first question actually came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, Shakir. Uh, he said, okay, so I guess here's a question from subscribers. As a recent fan, and to give you an idea of what I mean, I've kind of been a fan of the Ravens since they won their last Super Bowl. But at that time, I had zero football knowledge. Never even watched the Ravens win that Super Bowl, but I just kind of had respect. Fast forward to 28-3. and three. I'm finally a football fan, and the year that the Ravens draft Lamar Jackson, I became a Ravens fan. All right, but my question is, am I delusional for not being worried about two-thirds starting wide receivers being injured? Uh, the three starters are Sammy Watkins, Hollywood, and Bateman. Uh, and with Hollywood and Bateman being out right now, I feel completely comfortable with Sammy, Prochet, and DuVernay. Um, so, no, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that you were delusional um, for not being worried, uh, especially with the way that the Ravens play the game of football. Uh, they do a lot of running, uh, and I mean, it's, it's expected that the passing is going to go up this year, uh, especially with the new coaching staff and uh, with the additions that they made at wide receiver. But I, um, another reason I think you don't even need, we don't even need to really be worried is because Hollywood going to be back any day now. Miles Boykin going to be back any day now. Uh, with Bateman, though, it's, it's, it's going to be a little while. Uh, and I know Harbaugh said, I, I mean, he said September. I'm thinking more October, but, hey, I'm not a doctor. So we'll see how that thing goes. Um, but I think there's, right now, there's no reason to worry, especially because, biggest reason, because they're not long-term injuries. That's, that's the biggest reason right there. Uh, so, no, you're not delusional at all. Next question came from my guy Cody, who was also a Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, um, whether you've ever considered starting a Discord server for the channel. I've joined Discord servers in the past to be able to discuss topics I'm interested in more deeply, and it always was a lot of fun. Being that you're uh, the favorite Ravens YouTuber of so many, as well as you're always uh, promoting a positive and mature attitude amongst Ravens flock, I think you can start a Discord server that will share the positivity and maturity you create in your YouTube comment section and live stream chats. Just a thought. Anyways, keep up the great work and much love. Appreciate it, Cody. I, I've thought about it a little bit, but really, I just, um, with group chats, it's just, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot to keep up with. It's a lot to maintain. And I recently, like before preseason, um, I deleted like a bunch of them. Because I'm like, I'm not trying to keep up with all of this. Uh, and enough times, too, one thing that I absolutely hate about group chats is that, um, some people they they let their emotions get the best of them. They like if the Ravens are doing something like if if it's doing a game or something and the Ravens are doing bad, then they letting everything fly in there, and that's not me. So I don't want to be affiliated with that. I don't want to be running a group chat where that happens because uh, that will come back on me. Um, so with that, and and some people will even come in there. They'll they'll come in there respectfully and be like, oh yeah yeah, we'll keep it clean and da 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 da, keep it respectful, but. Again, what, when, the, when the game is actually on or the Ravens make a move that somebody doesn't like, the Ravens cut somebody that, uh, that somebody doesn't like, they like, oh, man, they just go off. So I just, um, no, as far as group chats, I, 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 I no, I, I don't think I'm going to create a Discord or anymore. I already have enough. Um, I have some that I'm in that are not mine, um, but I have a couple that are mine. But I, as far as adding another one via Discord, no, nah, it probably won't happen. Next question also came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Nick Brick, and you know he always bringing it. Anyway, he said, Engraven, hope you're doing well. Oh yeah, we're doing really good, man. I appreciate it. Quick question about the backup QB role. McSorley, now he sent this on August 16th. Today is August 18th. 
Um, so anyway, he said, quick question. Uh, McSoley fans are saying that it was unfair because g called different plays for Tyler Huntley. But isn't it more likely that g told us who he thinks is the best by the play calling? Based on comments by Ravens players like Hollywood, it seems like Roman is unwilling to call plays he doesn't trust the offensive players to make. Mm. Obviously, the battle solved itself, but is it possible that Roman was already telling us who he thought was better? Mm. I Wow. Yep. You. Okay. Yeah. And he said also unrelated. How is Justin Tucker not in the Madden 99 club? Give my man his chain. That's true. Like, how is the best kicker in the league? And really one of the best kickers to ever do it. How is he not a 99? That like that doesn't matter. I think he's like an 89, something like that. It's, it's something crazy. But anyway, back to the original question. Um, with And he said, what well, was Giro possibly telling us who he thought was already better? Now, yeah, I've seen a lot of people have a lot of conversations about that. Uh, about how the play calling was different for Trace McSorley versus Tyler Huntley. And in my opinion, the biggest reason for that is because of their ability. Which one of those two is a lot closer to Lamar than the other one? And of course, when you have a backup quarterback, your, your goal of a backup quarterback is to be able to come in just in case and sort of try to replicate what you're already doing on offense so you can continue and maintain whatever level of success you're having. And even if there's a slight drop off, you want to try to get a, a, as close as possible to the level of success that you would have with your starting quarterback. Now, which one of those two quarterbacks is the closest to Lamar skill set wise? Yeah, that's the answer. Next question came from Dawson. He said, hey, Graven, hope you and the fam are doing well. I was wondering if I could get your thoughts on Chris Westry and his chances of making the 53-man roster. He's an under-the-radar cornerback that's 6'4 and runs about a 4'3 and a 40. He seems to be making a lot of plays throughout training camp and looks like a dark horse to make the roster. Even though Ravens are deep at the cornerback position, I could see him making an impact on special teams with all his athleticism. And it's funny because he sent this on August 8th. That was before the preseason game. So he already, he saw something and he knew something. And the Ravens, they showed it as well because they put him on special teams too. He was obviously out there on defense, but they put him on special teams too uh, as a gunner with him and Oway out there chasing down the punt return. Ooh. Anyway, uh, he said, if you see Chris Westry making a team, how many corners do you see the Ravens keeping? I'd have seven. Marlo, MP, Tay Tay, Jimmy, Sean Wade, Anthony Averett, and Chris Westry. What are your thoughts? Sorry for the long question. I hope you and all the team keep it clean, stay safe. And just like Orlando Brown Jr. when he sees Adafi screaming at him off the edge, I'm out. <laughs> Um, appreciate you. Uh, with uh, Chris Westry, right now I could definitely see him making the roster, for sure. Um, especially with Jimmy Smith's injury history. Chris Westry is a uh, big, physical, tall, fast, outside corner. Uh, Jimmy Smith, he is a big, physical, tall, um, not fast, fast, but he had a decent amount of speed. Of course, his speed has uh, like tinkered off a bit in, in over the years, but he still got it. When he's healthy, he still got it. Uh, but that's the thing with Jimmy Smith is when he's healthy. Um, you know Jimmy Smith's history. You know what's likely to happen, what you hope doesn't happen, but what has happened just so much over the years. Um, so, again, like I say all the time, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, with Chris Westry, I could definitely see him making the roster, especially since it seems like they're going to trade Anthony Averitt. Uh, it just it, it, it just seems like the writing is on the wall, man, that they're going to trade Anthony Averitt. I don't want them to. I, I really like Anthony Averitt. Um, but the way that they talk about him, the way that they speak of him, it just seems like they are looking. They filled an office for him. They're trying to put it out there without putting it out there that Anthony Averitt uh, is on the trade block. I hope to be wrong about this because I would love for him to stay. Because uh, like I always say, I just feel like he's so close, man. He's, he's so close to turning that page as a cornerback. Um, he just got to make more plays on the ball. Like they even showed, well, of course the Ravens didn't show it, but um, maybe one of the, the, the Ravens beat writers did or something. But one of the reporters showed Anthony Averitt was going one-on-one -on -one with Terrace Marshall Jr., um, and he was right there. Terrace Marshall didn't burn him or nothing on the route. He was right there, but Terrace Marshall caught the ball, and Anthony Averitt just didn't make a play on it. Now, of course, that was just one play. So I didn't see all the practice today, so – I don't know what happened, but that's been his biggest struggle. That's been his biggest weakness. Um, but we're, we're just hearing Wink talk about yesterday in the presser that, oh, Anthony Avers, he's been the, the third best corner that we have. It's like, oh, okay. I, I, once he said that, a lot, I saw, not, not just me, but I saw a lot of people realize, like, oh, okay, we see what y'all are doing. Y'all ain't slick. 
Um, so it seems as if Anthony Averett is uh they 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 they're looking to make a trade with somebody. Um, so I think Chris Westry that that'll give him even more uh wiggle room to make it on to Ravens roster and uh, like I said earlier with Jimmy Smith's injury history. <laughs>